So we're gonna use the little nozzle on this. It does have a big spray. So if you have a big wide seal outside, it will spray a big fan. Now, before you slide this out to do the outside, you wanna make sure, just let this dry. We're gonna get all these seals good in condition because these are the ones that are out in the weather the most, but you want to keep these conditioned so they don't rot off. That smells awful. Don't smell the bag. <laughs> coming to you from this little bumper pull trailer sitting here at the dinette just kick back chilling out we've got the seals changed on this bad boy and some of them were a total pain in the butt so uncle bud um, i'm glad i was able to do it for you but some of them were tough um, but they're all changed now some of the seals are in great condition some of them just completely failed um, i don't know if there was any conditioner on it before which prolongs the life of the seal but we're going to go ahead and do that today. So that's what today's video is about. We're going to condition the seals, um, which will help prolong the life of them. It'll keep weather out. It helps when you're sliding in and out, less friction. Um, so they're not getting bound up and ripped off. I think that's what happened on these. I think some of the vertical seals got a little bit gummy and they caught on the slide when it was going in and out and it just peels some of those dudes off. So what we're going to use today is the three in one slide conditioner. Um, I don't necessarily endorse this product. This video is not sponsored by anybody. Just three in one is a good product. I use it in a lot of other stuff. If you're familiar with something else, or if you have a friend or family member that uses something on their slide, use what they use. That's okay. But before we can add any of this to it, we got to make sure it's clean. So I'm going to use the same cleaner that we prepped um, when we're putting the seals back on before, just to get any dirt, grime, any grease off of it. And um, so that's what we're going to do today. So without further ado, Let's get started and get these seals ready to slide. Can y'all see me good? It's extreme close up. The first seal we're gonna do is the vertical wiper here. Um, and what we have to do, like I said, this is a new seal, it's clean. What I see a lot of people do when they condition it, they just do the outside here. You need to fold it back, you need to do both sides. So let's get to that. I'm gonna use a couple different rags. I'm gonna use a blue microfiber. This will be my application rag. Then I have some green so I can keep them straight, which one's which, this would wipe off any overspray. So that's one thing you do want to do, you're going to get overspray in here. It's not that big of a deal on this surface here, just wipe it off, but when you're working on the inside, make sure you're not getting on any paneling, any trim, wood, cloth, mini blinds, any of that kind of stuff. If you need to hold a rag or block something there just to keep the overspray from going, you may want to do that. I think we can get to this one just fine. So we're gonna use the little nozzle on this. It does have a big spray. So if you have a big wide seal outside, it will spray a big fan. We're gonna use this here just to spray a coat inside and out. Then we will take our blue rag and then we will spread this down. So let's get started with that. Just get a good coat on there. If you need to, you can spray it on the towel. It's gonna to tell you to spray it directly to the seal, but if you get you a good saturated spot on the rag it's going to do the same thing spray it inside the seal you may want to wear you some latex gloves and down here hopefully you can see that if you hear that rattling noise in the background you're wondering what that is that is the sound of progress we got several projects going on today so i apologize for that but if we ain't making noise, we ain't making money. If you're sweeping the floor, you ain't making any money. Now I've got it so slick, I can't get my fingers in behind there. And just take your time, make sure you get a good coating on there. So now I'm gonna take my other microfiber. I'm just gonna wipe off the gel coat a little bit. It's okay to have some on there. Wipe down the aluminum extrusion. Now, before you slide this out to do the outside, you wanna make sure, just let this dry so it's got a good coating. We don't wipe any extra off we need to, but you can feel it now. It just feels clean, feels smooth. So now we're gonna jump around to the other side. We're gonna try to film that, it's pretty tight in there. Um, I did remove the door into the bedroom so we can get in there. So let's run over there and see if we can get that wiped down. All right, we are in close quarters for sure. We'll do inside the seal first. This one was a booger to get in there. It 
just like butter. Look at that. I don't think we're supposed to whistle in the mic. I feel my camera lady staring at the back of my head as we speak. All right, let's wipe off the gel coat. We're gonna let that dry. We're gonna take a coffee break, and then we're gonna do the outside. So hang tight, we'll be right back. We're gonna grab the ladder. We're gonna jump up on this. We're gonna do the top real quick. We're gonna get all these seals good in condition because these are the ones that are out in the weather the most. If you'll do this several times a year, depending on where you live, if it sets out in the sun like this one does, you may have to do that more, but you want to keep these conditioned so they don't rot off and you don't have to go through all this trouble to change it again. So let me grab my spray, my ladder. We'll set the camera up and we'll get it wiped down. Before we start applying our conditioner, I wanna to touch on one thing. Let's take a look at the roof on this. So you see how nasty this is? If you will get this washed off and keep it clean, it will prolong the life of this roof as well. If you say, man, I don't wanna get there and tackle that. Most areas, there's some mobile people that will come out, do an RV wash, they'll do a roof wash. They even make some conditioners for some of these roofs, depending on what type of covering you've got. But get this washed off, that also gives you a time to like, Look at this seal here, this self-leveling compound. It does wear out over time. Sometimes you can just have it good and clean and you can touch it up. Many times if it's cracking, you need to remove this, put some new self-leveling around it. Anywhere where you have a penetration point on your roof, look at that while you're going to all this other trouble just to make this thing last and you don't get a roof leak. Once you get a roof leak or a slide leak and you get water damage on the inside, these things go down in value in a hurry. So with that being said, let's go ahead and wipe these seals down. And just remember to do the underside as well. It's a little harder. We didn't show filming the inside upper seal because we couldn't get the camera in there. It's so tight in there. That tells me two things that it's hard to work in there and that a lot of people are just gonna neglect that because it's hard to work in there. So don't do that. Sometimes you gotta put some manual labor elbow grease on there. And if you can't physically do this yourself, it's probably worth the money to pay an RV tech or somebody that does this just to keep this thing going for you to save you some trouble down the road. I'm gonna scoop my ladder over. We'll get the rest of this upper done. If you get some on the awning, get that off. It's also a good time to check your awning. I can tell you from the looks of this one, it's gonna need a replacement cloth sooner than later on it. If you've ever conditioned your seals, share with me how many times you do it a year, how well it's worked for you, have you seen a noticeable difference, um, and, and just kind of what the turnout was. If you did it yourself, or maybe if you had to hire, hire it done, tell me how that went for you. Go back and wipe off. I don't think we have any overspray on the gel coat, but just in case. And like we talked about the top, that applies for here too. Get this cleaned off. Just kind of double check, make sure. That thing looks brand new. Well, partly because it is brand new, but we're good now. These seals probably have some conditioner on it from the factory. I don't know what they have, what they don't have, but we know they got some three in one on it now. So I'm gonna hop down. We're gonna do the two verticals and the bubble seals as well. So let's get back on the ground. Um, as I said in the beginning of the video, uh, you may wanna put you some gloves on. Now that I'm almost done, I've decided to put my gloves on. The overspray. That dude is good. That's slicker than owl poop right there. I'll tell you what. So now what we're gonna do is do the other end, do the other slide, and we're done with that. I'm not gonna film all that because you get the point by now and you're gonna get bored to death and you're not gonna continue watching. So I'll show you one other thing we're gonna do on this, something else to look at, something else that needs a protective coating. So let's move straight to that. Just kidding, before we move on to that, my camera lady just told me, hey dummy, you didn't do the bubble seal. So this dummy's gonna do the bubble seal now. So bear with me, we'll do it quick. Now 
now we're gonna move on. So the other thing I noticed while we were doing the seals and looking at the roof on this is some of the plastic covers, some of the plastic trim is starting to get pretty chalky from the sun, this upper and lower um, cover for the refrigerator, this lower fender down here is pretty chalky. So we're just gonna kind of film that. We'll do a before and after. We're gonna put some uh, conditioner on that, see if we can bring the life back out in it. What I'm gonna use today is this product, not sponsored or endorsed by it. I have never used this product before. So we're gonna see how it works. Hopefully it works great since this is not my camper. If you have used this product out there, share with that with me in the comments, see how it turned out well for you, or maybe you know something better. So let's open one of these wipes up and let's make it shiny. The first thing to do before we apply it is read the instructions, unless you used it before and you know how to use it. First thing it says to do is make sure the surface is dry. So we're gonna wipe all this down. It looks dry to me, but we have had some nasty weather. We've had sleet, snow, rain, sunshine. We've had it all in the last week or two. Move on in here, the fender. I believe these fenders used to be black, if I remember correctly. Kind of like a chalky gray now. They're kind of wanting to go back black just from the rag. So they are dry. So the next thing it says to do, it says open the packet. You're gonna wipe it in overlapping passes. I have not tried this yet, so this may be a camera fail. <coughs> that smells awful. Don't smell the bag. That is, that is horrendous. It smells like horse pee, if we're just gonna be honest. It's probably got some type of ammonia in it. So overlapping passes. If you're sensitive to strong smells, make sure this is a ventilated area. May even respirator. Looky there, looky there. It's looking good so far. I hope it's not too good to be true. But so far, I'm liking it. I don't know if this stuff is flammable or not. As strong as it smells, it may be. So if you're smoking right now, you may not want to do that. You may want to put that down until you get this wiped out. I don't know, it looks pretty good. Let's try it on the fender. We'll see how far this one wipe goes. We'll probably have to do another wipe, I would imagine. It's gonna be like magic. It's gonna go from this to like shiny car. Getting the screws is pretty tough. I'm actually gonna go and do those first. Always teach our guys. Do the hardest stuff first as possible. That way you're not apt to half do it. She's still going. This has never been done before. So it's probably gonna soak this stuff up. I think in some applications you just do a single wipe, but this is very textured. So I had to put a little bit more elbow grease in it. I'm gonna go and get another wipe out. I think we about got the best out of this one. There's a pretty good before and after. Don't know how well this stuff will hold up, but we'll know in a few months. Let's go ahead and finish it out. I can literally see it soaking it up in the plastic as we're wiping. Probably can't catch that on camera. Did I miss any spots, camera lady? Oh, there's one right there. I think that looks better. You start to see it dry some on that as it's soaking it up. So I'm curious to see what it looks like after it's had some time to dry. 
If it stays oily, I would not think it would. If it does, we'll wipe it down with a microfiber if it's got any residue on it. But if this works, any of the plastic on here, you could do this just to, just to make it look better um, in case you ever want, decide to sell this or trade it in. These do take some maintenance. That's the unfortunate part about an RV. You may only pull it four to six times a year. Maybe you're a professional and you pull it all the time. Maybe you're full time, but nonetheless, you gotta do maintenance. You need to keep the gel coat clean, try to keep it out of the sun, keep the gel coat conditioned on here, just like a boat. If you see how shiny this side is here, see if we can catch that in the camera. It's pretty shiny. Now let's go look at the other side that is out in the sun. So as you can see the decals on the passenger side compared to the decals on the front. These still have some color in them. The ones on the front have been baked off. The gel coat is completely dead. It will have to be revitalized and that will take a ton of elbow grease. As you come around to the driver's side, you'll see where the sun has baked the decals off. They're starting to peel. Those will have to be removed and reapplied. It doesn't take long for it to get away from you. We'll try to find some links to the products we use in this video. If we can find those, we'll leave them in the description below. Remember, leave us a comment. Hope you enjoy our videos. If you have an idea for a video, please share that with us. And like I said earlier, if you've used some of these products or something similar to this on your RV, share that with me. You may be doing something better than me. Um, so I'm, I'm always open to learn. Um, that's what we should be doing every day. So hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you on the next one.